I think we have enough people. First of all, thank you for joining. Um, I know it's uh, after it's noon time, so <laughs> I hope that we cannot make this session interactive. If you have any question, feel free to ask uh, it, it in the Q&A tab. I will look into it and I will address it. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Rati. Uh, I am Account Security Solutions Engineer with Twilio. And today, the theme of the workshop will be serverless to FA global deployment with Twilio Verify functions and quick deploy. So just a legal disclaimer, uh, things that we discuss might be forward looking. So make your informed decision before purchasing anything. And today, um, I would like to start uh, sharing with you the prerequisites. Again, I have shared this material in the chat box. There's a link there, so feel free to download it and then have a look on the prerequisite section. And then I will start with the Twilio uh, Verify introduction and then we're gonna build. So first of all, this is the prerequisite. Uh, my intention is you can have a look at this and there's a link that you can click to create all these prerequisites required. You can also install the CLI here and then we can create the Verify service together. Uh, but this one, uh, the first one and the second one, if you want to do um, build along with me, please uh, do it beforehand while I'm talking about Twilio Verify. You can listen and do that at the same time. Okay, first, um, before we understand why actually Twilio Build Verify, I want to talk to you about the high cost of fraud. So fraud as of now is a $50 billion a year business problem especially with businesses that is online. And let's face it, with the current world, a lot of our transaction is online. And there are a few different scenarios where fraud can happen. Um, first is the new account fraud, where if typically a user will sign up with a fake account or fake identity, and then they will try to get an incentive like sign up incentives, new user offer, and this will create a problem for user acquisition but there needs to be a balance between a proper flow of the signed up uh, security uh, to make sure that the user doesn't drop off during the sign up process. And then the second one is account takeovers. Um, this is where the scenario someone of um, some attacker has access to login account and password. So it's not enough for now to just uh, secure it with password. We need another layer of security to make sure that this scenario doesn't happen. The last one is uh, we know how difficult it is to make sure our business stay compliance, especially with PDPA, PII, as well as what's I think more important uh, with the theme of this workshop about FinTech is PSP2, where you need to add secure strong authentication for a financial transaction. So now we know the tip type of fraud and the typical attack when it happens. Uh, we need to know how user verification can be used to fight frauds and protect user account. So in the verifying user for sign up, it will create, it will allow you to verify the possession of the number that user is submitting for the sign up. And for logins, this will, uh, this will prevent someone else's that is not the right person who has an access to the uh, username and password to access the account. Lastly, for the secure transaction, this will allow um, a proper authorization before payments or transaction happens. So now that we know the high cost of fraud and how user verifications can be used to fight against it, why will you verify? So a lot of our customer come to us and mention that a big problem for them to create a global delivery for OTP is actually to make sure that it is optimized for redundancy, low latency, and it is global scale. So that's precisely what we are going to build today, a global delivery of 2FA uh, or OTP delivery. And they also come to us and say that it's um, a lot of problem to create 2FA with different channels. Because let's face it, end user nowadays, they have different, different way that they prefer to be contacted. Some user might prefer SMS, some user might prefer call. So with Twilio Verify, it's just one API for email, voice and call. And now we also have push. And lastly, even though the customer already built their own OTP and uh, backend logic for the verification, 
it's another set of problem to make sure the, opera the operations is proper and to make sure that there's monitoring in place, maintenance in place, and fraud controls. So with Verify, what you get is the purpose-built omnichannel verification that is uh, that makes your development and deployment faster and easier. Okay, so now we are going to have a look into a typical um, workflow for Verify that is being used for secure login. So there is different different actor here. You have your end user, you have your backend application, Twilio Verify, it's a mobile device of a user, and then this is a protected resources. Typically the flow is that user wants to um, access a protected resource. So he or she will be presented with a form to, to do login. Once the user login, uh, you, your backend will ask for the OTP delivery to Twilio Verify. Verify will deliver the OTP to the device and for end user. And then user will input the device into the form in your application. And your application will present that again to call Verify. So from this um, step one to five, the only thing or the only API that you will call Verify is the first one, which is the verification start. And then number five, which is verification check. So only two API for the whole uh, secure login process. Because here, uh, Twilio will notify whether the verification is approved or deny if the OTP is wrong, obviously. And then if it's approved, uh, your application can proceed to let the access for the protected resources. So when we say we simplify 2FA, we really simplify it. There's two API to call, which is verification and then verifications check. Okay. So now you might be wondering after that explanation, what exactly are we going to build today? So from the link that you downloaded the materials, you can click over here, OTP verifications. And the GitHub is just the templates that we are going to build today, the complete code that we are going to build today. And this will show you actually this page. Essentially what this page is um, sort of a simple flow for testing Verify where you can input your phone number and then you receive an SMS OTP that you can input in the form and then you can verify whether the OTP is correct or not. So I have one that I run locally because I will mask my phone number. Okay, so here I need to put in my, my OTP. So how it will look like is I will have this auth MSG alpha sender ID with test function is my verify service. I will show you in the console later. So when you create the service, it will show where I will receive the OTP from. And then this is the number that I need to input. So let's go ahead and input that number. Okay, so we'll see that the verification success. So all it is for this whole um, flow is actually you have a user put in the number in one uh, web page and then it will call verification start, send the number, and then we can input the number and then verifications check and then it will show ver uh, verification is successful. So it's a simplified version, but you can imagine that the calling of these two API can work within your workflow of any verifications. Um, I don't see any question in the Q&A. Feel free to post there or oh, someone is asking. Sorry, I'll, um, I'm just gonna read questions for now and then I'll get back to the presentations just so that um, I can address it time to time. Uh, keep trying my account without knowing the password. To effect control, so when I come online, I should not face account lock issue. Yeah, correct. So, um, yeah, Rafinda, I think um, in terms of best practices, typically for the secure login, 2FA will be after your uh, username and password is 
um, authenticated, then you will uh, start the verification of the 2FA. So I think if you want to control for the block issue, that needs to be in your own verification logic for the username and password. I hope that clarifies it. You can add another chat if you still have questions. So I will go back to the materials now. Um, so every time there's a logical breakpoint, I will have a look at the chat. So feel free to add questions there and then I'll answer it and then go back to the materials. Okay, so before we start um, building, I want to go into the Twilio console. I hope that everyone already created their account so they can um, click along with me and see what's, what's in the console. So I have created a specific account for today. This is a new account, which is a trial account. When, once you created a new account in Twilio, you will have um, some balance that you can use to test and build. So we can, everyone that's uh, registered today, um, I have tried. Uh, you can build and then test a few of the messages before you run out of the balance. So don't worry about it. Okay, so two uh, services that we are going to use today. First is Verify, obviously. And then the second is Functions. But I want to first go over um, the look and feel of the console, explain a little bit where you can get some information that would be useful later on. So upon accessing the console, you will see the project info here because I have different different accounts. So this is one of the accounts and then all accounts have this balance and then they have this account zip. Your account zip and your authentication token, um, you will need to access it or you will need to use it to call API or to your API. But just for the purpose of the project, we can we are going to use this in terms of production. There are different ways that is more secure um, to call verify API, mainly like API keys. Um, just to take note on that. And then if you don't have this pin, you can go to the explore products. And here you can find all of the product group. Verify will be under account security. And then you can go ahead, click verify. Okay, so this is the service that I'm using for my local um, login with Hero Verify just now. It's called test function. And then this is the service ID. So let's go ahead and create another service for the purpose of our next field. I'm going to call it serverless phone verification. I'm going to create the service. If I'm going too fast or if there are any question, please go ahead and ask. So this is the service name, serverless phone verification. And then this is the service set. I'm going to go ahead and copy this so I can use it. And then the code length, you have the option to change the code length. For the purpose of this project, I'm going to stay on the default settings. Lookup is our another uh, account security product. It is returning line type and carrier information in API response. For example, it will it will return whether it's a landline or if it's a mobile. So landline validation, if it's a landline number, we will not send an SMS to a landline number. And then the rest I will keep as a default. And delivery channels, I will use all enabled. So I'm gonna save this now. A few things um, that we can have a look in this console is also um, in the monitor, or we can have a look at the insights here. So when you use Verify, you will get the information of number of valid um, numbers of valid transaction or valid verification. Okay, I don't have it because this is new service. <laughs> Let me show how it looks like. So you will have a valid verifications and invalid verification. You can see some of the delay means that how long user verify, verify after they receive the OTP. And you can also see the logs. So this will be useful. Um, oops. 
this will be useful for you um, when you are debugging. So I am going to go back to the console service list. Now let's have a look at functions. So functions is essentially where the serverless applications, um, you can access the serverless applications. So as of now, I don't have any service created, but we will revisit functions once we deploy our serverless application. Okay. So I hope that um, if you want to do the build along with me, you have uh, two of the prerequisites completed. If you have issue with the CLI installation or with the account console, um, you can let me know. Uh, meantime, let me check. Um, yeah, so is there audit tracing in case mobile mobile number is not able to receive SMS? Yes, we do have logs um, if the message is not delivered. Uh, does log store the mobile number of customer of, of consumer? So yes and no, there is an option for um, redacted logs um, that you can request and then we can enable. Uh, let's say you are using it for a specific uh, service that has different compliance or stricter compliance. Let's say you can't keep an user mobile number or the mobile number that you are sending the OTP, you can get it detected in your log and our log. Yeah, so um, Ravindra, I'm not sure for the last question if no means that I don't store the mobile number. Yeah, so for the case that is redacted, there, there are implications that, um, so redacted means there is like, um, in the in the in the end the number will be masked so sometimes with with that redacted then you will have a problem of verifying whether the correct number is receiving the otp or not so it's a trade-off um, if you ask for redaction in our log and your log that means we don't store the full mobile number of the end user i hope that clarifies okay so i am going to start the build now. I'm gonna use um, yeah. I'm gonna use this. So I am now in my uh, documents. I created a folder API days, and then I will first log in. In so I have a Twilio CLI here. I'm going to log in. show how you can get that information so you can click here in the top for the account and then it will um, route you back to the initial page you can just copy you can copy this and then Copy the authentication token. I'm gonna name it API days. Okay. So now I am logged in as this account. The next step. Uh, okay, I am going to copy this to the chat because I don't know whether you can copy it from PDF. Okay. So now what we are going to do is because we are building a serverless uh, application, I'm going to go ahead and install the serverless plugin. So this is how you install plugins from the Twilio CLI, just Twilio plugins install and then the plugins name. Want to install. So now it will download and install the plugin. After that, we can have a look at the available commands for the Twilio serverless. Okay, so let's have a look. 
I think if you are familiar with serverless, these commands will be familiar uh, for you. You have a deploy, you have init, list, list templates, logs, new and promote and start. So what we want to do next is to create a new project or new serverless project with a verified template. Let's copy the instruction and then I'll break down the instruction. So Twilio serverless init is to create the new serverless. And then verify sample is what uh, the name of the project on my local will be. And then I will get it from the template of verify and then I will go into the verify sample. Right. So it takes a bit to download the project now. In the meantime, I will open my Visual Studio Code. Okay, it finishes the download. Let me open. So this is the template uh, of the project. In the beginning, in the earlier slide, I have put this uh, link for the GitHub um, for the template as well, so you can download it after this session. Okay, so essentially you have one HTML web page and just two functions, which is the start of the verification and then the verification check. So the web page is nothing special, it's just um, building you the page that we saw just now. Um, and then this is where you can put your phone number, your email, and the rest of the information we saw on the page. Let's now um, crawl to this start verification and see how Verify is being used. Um, just before we do that, I want to also show that you actually, if you already have access to the console, if you look over here, you can also access documents from here. So you can access the document from here. Um, what we are going to see is actually this portion, which is the user verification workflow. So let's have a look at the, at the code and then I will show you the response um, here. Okay, so for the start of the verification, um, this is just a validation check of the input. And I want you to take note of this block here for our master template we are disabling call because um, this is to prevent tall fraud. So if you want to be able to have call, we can do that later for the um, serverless portion. We can delete this and then um, test for the call verification. You can delete this block. But for now, let's focus on the verification service start. So basically what you will do is you have a verify service, verifications create, Two is the phone number that is um, input in the web page. Channel is basically SMS for now. And local is uh, the type of language that the uh, end user choose. So if you see here, actually you have different options of languages and it will translate into different, into all of this local. And here you can just Lock the verification is sent successfully, and that's it. 
So the creation of the verification, basically you just call one API and then provide us the phone number to send, the channel, uh, to se the channel that you are going to use to send it, and then the language is optional. And then here for the verification check, so the flow again uh, to trace back to the workflow that we see before. So you call the start of the verification once you receive the input of the phone number and the channel. And then you wait for the second form to pop up and user to enter the OTP. So now you have the OTP, you will call these functions of check verify. So this will call the verification check service. And then the information that you need is basically the phone number and the code input from the form or from the end user. And then you wait for Twilio to give a status back whether it's approved. And then if it's approved, you will uh, either a prompt a verification success or let user access the uh, protected assets or resources. So let's have a look here for the response. So when you create the verification service, we already did. Okay, so when you send the verification token, which is basically this one, the phone number and then the code, this is what you will get back. This is what you will get back. So initially the status uh, when the verifications is created will be pending. And then you have a date created, date updated, and remember, we enabled our lookup. So we also have these informations as a response. And then you have this send code attempts information. And you have this URL information. This is the verification SID. So there is two SID here, which is the service SID and then the verifications SID. We're not going to use this verification SID for the project today, but this response of verification SID, you can make use of it to fetch the verification if you need to. So this is the ID of this specific verification instance. And then on the check verification token, once you send this code uh, input from the user, you will get this information. The Again, the uh, SID of the verification itself the service SID, the account SID, the two, and then the channel, and then the status. So this is where you need to check whether it's approved or not. So there's gonna be two different status, approved if the OTP is correct, pending if the OTP is incorrect. Okay, so yeah, no question so far. I hope that means everyone is following along. Okay. So what we will do now is to tie it back so that we can use, uh, we can call this API when we run this um, project. So here you have an environment variable with your account zip, your auth token, and then your verify service SID. So all these you need to fill in before you run it. So now I will go to the one that I have already filled in. Um, in fact, I will fill that up. Again, you can get the account set and auth token from here. verify service SID. If you don't copy it before, it will be available here. So I'm going to use this one. This time. So I'm going to save this and hide it. Let's 
So it's going to be this one. So it works. I have it, uh, the code sent here. So I'm going to input that. So now that we have it running on our local, uh, you might be thinking, you said it's deployment. You said it's serverless. So let's deploy that. If anyone remember the code or um, how we deploy is actually serverless deploy. So let's do that. Oops. not live until I make a mistake. Thank you. So now it is deploying to my account based on this location and the verified service SID that we have identified in the environment just now, the environment file. So we're going to wait for a little bit. If anyone is making instant noodle, I think this is faster. Okay, it's done. It's faster than you make instant noodle. So remember just now that I mentioned we are going to use service uh, functions. So if you go in functions here, now you will have this deployed, which is the service that we have tested in our local. So from here, you might be wondering, so how do I access it? Basically, it's this. So you will see different um, information here. The domain is where it is deployed. The service is the information of the project itself. This is the environment and the build seed, which is part of the functions. And then you have two functions, and then you have assets here. right? So this is the domain. This is the asset. Since we want to access the landing page, we're going to click this. Which will bring you to the deployed version of our service. So if anyone wants to test with their phone number, go ahead and test it. I placed it in the chat. just to make sure that it's working. Uh, but remember, we didn't activate the call, so it will only work for SMS, and you can put in your number and then test different languages if you want. Okay, let's get back to functions now. Yeah. So here you can see the same thing. You can see index.html. You can see the verify and then the check verify. And then here, if you notice here, the Twilio credentials, since this is the console, we can just, it will seen as it will be added as a Twilio credentials here to the environment variables. And then the verify service ID is an added key that we use because we are using verify service. So if you are using different service for serverless deployment, then you need to add it uh, to add in, in the key in the environment system on your local project, and then you deploy it, and then you will be able to see it here. So far, is there any questions, any confusion? 
all the materials is available here, by the way. So you can, you can test it out on by yourself um, after this session. So we are done with um, testing it uh, with uh, creating a serverless project, validating it in our local, and then deploying it in uh, Twilio functions. So now you might be wondering, so we have done verify, we have done function, where is the quick deploy? So let's have a look to this link. It's actually this one. It's a beta feature of Twilio, quick deploy to Twilio. So I want to refresh this just to make sure that it has the correct account. So the account name is API Days, API Days Workshop. And then let's input our Verify service ID here. In fact, let's create a new service for the purpose of quick deploy. I'm not going to change anything. Just going to get the service set. And we deploy. So here we don't do anything. We don't, um, we don't download the code. We don't create a new serverless project. We just simply click here, and it will create everything, linking it with this Verify service ID. That's why I'm showing you this last, because if we do this first, then there's no point of doing the CLI version. I'm just kidding. I mean, you can do both. So we can go to the live applications, and we can change the, uh, the application. If we want to change the service set, that we, then we can do that. Or we can add it or customize directly in the code. Let's go to the live application first. So if you notice here, this is a different deployment with this, with the other one. Where is the other one? Okay. Anyway, this is a different deployment, okay. The one that we have before is this one. And then now we have this one. So this quick deploy, essentially what it does is it will take the template from here, which is the same that we have been using with index HTML, the verification um, tool, verification JavaScript, and it deploys it directly to the functions with the information that we are giving here. So it runs um, smoothly without us uh, needing to touch the code at all. So now let's change this. Let's customize it. Let's allow it to make phone call. So once you deploy, you can make changes in the Twilio functions itself. So let's go to the start verify, where we know that we need to delete a block to enable it for call. So let's delete this block. And then we save. Then we can deploy. Again, it's pretty quick process. Let's have a look. So it deploys in the same um, domain. Then let's do a call now. I'm going to choose French language. Why not?
so if a phone call here you can hear that clearly but there was the OTP code being um, read by the call so I'm gonna paste it back here to make sure that my account doesn't get all brought okay so we are done with the quick deploy as well and you have all the resources here um, Let's have a look at the Twilio Serverless Toolkit. Am I good on time? I want to ask Josephine. Can you let us know, are we good on time? OK, three more minutes. Uh, please post questions if you have. We have three more minutes. But essentially, what we've done just now is using Twilio Verify um, to build the serverless deployment of the uh, 2FA. And for the e for if you uh, try to use send email, it won't work as it is in the template code. You will need to set up um, send grid email, which I have linked here on how to do that. So here you will be able to see how to set up verify email. Here you will be able to see um, the rest of the serverless toolkit functions and then this is the verified quick start so i want to show a little bit before we are running out of time if there's no questions on these functions so you have different different functions that you can try and build for different twilio services you have uh, conversations that you can easily do the same so you can call what we did just now with the terminal when we use this one um, verify template with this one you can use the name of the other template if you want to build it so you can go here and then you can test out a conference for example and then you can do different thing hello world messaging mass number yeah my last word is have fun, have fun building, have fun testing out since you have the account already and some balance, feel free to play around with it. Thank you for joining. <laughs>